We have recently began a dialogue with a number of people about the important issues that press in upon us in this age, whether we like it or not. Electromagnetic frequency bombardment, microwave bombardment, use of the internet and social media that actually create neurological and psychological and physical illness, uh, electrohypersensitivity, all of these things which we have addressed in a number of articles recently, and I believe they're posted here upon the site. We wanted to also add an audio that might be able to give an overview, somewhat of a more spiritual overview of what it is that's going on. Now, because this appears on the Our Spirit site, we assume that you are conversant with Rudolf Steiner and his ideas and his cosmology, and so I'm just going to speak as if you do know these things, <laughs> and if not, I will explain them as I go along a bit. But how do we counteract, how do we countermand the fact that soon we're going to have 5G, the next generation, the fifth generation of wireless cell phones that are going to be beaming through us with what's called millawave or millimeter wave emanations from 300,000 antennas across America, creating a complete ocean, a fog of what is even worse than microwave, what, we, what I will refer to as millowave. So we need to stand against this. We need to have a moratorium against it. We need to try to stop this in every way. But as you will find out in the articles, it's not only here on the Earth, but they want to put this into space. They already have it for the military and space and satellites. And so these things are permeating us, whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not, and we have to deal with them. So people asked, once some of these things were presented, what we can do as antidotes. And I'm going to address that in just a minute. But first, I need to set the stage of what it is that we're fighting. And this is a battle. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, you cannot get away from the fact that there are billions of electromagnetic frequencies beaming through your body at all times. As a matter of fact, there are technologies where you can take a jacket that has panels on it that collect the this uh, the electromagnetic frequencies and microwaves going through you right now. They collect on these panels, wire them into a battery, and you can run your telephone off of it. So this isn't an imagination. This is a very real thing that most people don't think about because it's invisible. This is an invisible attack. And when I say attack, I say part of it is unconscious and part of it is not. Part of it is the plan of the development of a human of a being who is now a human being who has worked since the time of the invention of the steam engine and then subsequently thereafter every invention that we've had that has come into the modern age that now has created digital inventions where work for us in your telephone goes on in a realm that we can't imagine. We can't enter. We can't enter the invisible realm of electromagnetic frequencies and see them. Some people can feel them. And with Americans, smart meters have caused people to become very awake to the fact that smart meters are acting on a wireless frequency that's a microwave frequency. So it's the beginning of what we're going to see with the fifth generation, 5G, when it goes into millowave. Microwave is deadly when you focus it or contain it in your microwave, for instance, microwave oven. It can kill you. It can burn you up. It basically evaporates the water molecules in your body, destroys them, and completely destroys the structure of cells and basically the atomic structure of what it is that you then eat that comes out of the microwave oven. So you should, first off, don't do that. Second off, keep yourself away from your cell phone as often as possible. Don't sleep near it. And then there are many things you can do, which I'll go to in a minute. But who is it that we're fighting? Is this a conscious being? Is this a group of beings? Why is it that America is rushing forward with 5G and is already starting it in other countries? Why is it there's already 5G coming from satellites owned by Alphabet, the mother company of Google? Why do these things go on? Who is it that's doing this? In these articles, we explain some of them. The basically what is often called the well, the cooperation between the military and corporations, we'll just say that, which then drives innovation for the sake of weaponization. And that's what happened with the internet, that's what happened with social media. They became experiments that got out of control so that 
by accident, essentially, the internet became the mother of commerce. And then that created centralization. And that type of centralization cannot be overemphasized to be the wrong direction that we should go for the sake of the type of being that has been aware and coming into existence since the time of the invention of steam engines. Once we learned how to use a vacuum and out of nothing create something, it se seemingly, according to us, because these are invisible forces, we then learned how to basically call up subnatural forces. And those subnatural forces work with taming electrostatic energy, turning it into electromagnetic energy, and then even further forces that go deeper into the earth and deeper into the manipulation of frequencies and harmonics. And these frequencies and harmonics are what we're talking about. So I don't know that we can say that the fifth generation wireless cell phone is the third force that Rudolf Steiner talked about, but it certainly is an anti-force, an ugly negative shadow of the good type of harmonic energy that I'm going to also speak about in just a minute that can be utilized that are also radiant frequencies. So frequencies, when we say it, electromagnetic frequencies are those created by human beings by basically spinning metal and copper and magnets until you're able to pull out of the ethers literally the shadow manifestation of angel beings and from the earth at the same time pulling up elemental beings that in fact enslave human beings to the earth after they die. If you're addicted to your cell phone from birth till death, which we haven't done any longitudinal studies on any of this stuff, but let's say as a projection, if you're addicted to your phone like we see children addicted now, and then it, of course it gets worse in the future, after you die, you don't go into the realms between here and the moon and to Venus and Mercury and the sun and Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and the starry expanse of the zodiac. No, 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 no. You stay right on the earth in an electromagnetic field that is the spider web manifestation that Rudolf Steiner spoke about. The spider web that would encircle the earth and basically be what would welcome this being that he calls Araman. We would call it somewhat symptomatically as the materialism of our modern age, of secular humanism, of science being a mythology that we believe in, that we think is greater than any mythology before, when in fact science changes every day. We can't keep up with innovation. The only people keeping up with innovation is the military, because if it could be weaponized, the military already has stolen the patent and manipulated it for their own sake. And that I'm mean, speaking of Google, Facebook, Instagram. All of these things are in fact controlled through the patent office, which is controlled by DARPA, NQTEL, the Highland Forums, and so on and so forth. We speak about all of these things in the articles. So what are we fighting? Is there going to be an Aramonic being incarnated in America, as Rudolf Steiner predicted, or in North America in this millennia? We believe that there is. We believe that this is a preparation. And that the amazing thing is, Araman is already using the lure of Lucifer's cold light to draw people into the machines that control them instead of, like in 1984, the story of George Orwell, instead of creating a big brother that tries to manipulate us with the machines. No, it's the reverse. People like a digital heroine are addicted to the internet, to surfing, to Google, to Gmail, to YouTube, to their cell phones, to televisions, to all of the things that in our digital age steal human consciousness. And in fact, if you get them close to your head, will cause certain reactions that have been explained in the Gospel of Sophia books. The volume two goes into a very clear description of what happens with the energy in the brain and the heart and what Rudolf Steiner calls the etherization of the blood, where carbon is turned into calcium carbonate and deposited in the pineal gland. And without this, there is no human intelligence. So really, we are trying as a human being through perception and digestion, which is also perception, and through all the workings of our seven organ, uh, six organs of the heart, which is the sun and the six planets, through this interaction, we come into this world and we try to basically digest the most heavy substance here. And that's what's going on. He tells us, Rudolf Steiner tells us that in our age, we must study 
the Kalevala, the Finnish national epic, and the forging of the Sampo. I cannot overemphasize the inspiration that will come to people who study that work, the Kalevala, the Finnish national epic, especially if you get the right translation, if you're in English or if you can read it in other languages, if you get the right translations, the descriptions there are descriptions of what we're working with right now. And they're so beautiful. And also the story of Eros and Cupid or uh, Eros and Psyche. There's different names for it. But it was a ubiquitous tale, basically. It's, it's a tale that shows up everywhere. But if you examine that and you examine the Kalevala, you have really the psychological understanding of our age and the challenges of our age and the this really it's not even a myth but the story of um, Cupid and Psyche which became a mythology and of course as you know Cupid uh, is goes into the stars and also a Psyche in the end becomes immortal and that's what we're all trying to achieve isn't it but she goes to hell also she goes into the underworld and the same type of thing happens in the Kalevala, but it's on a consciousness level and has to do with the mysteries of the future. So you can barely understand what's being talked about in the Kalevala. But in the Kalevala and in the story of, I like to say, Eros and Cupid, you have the challenges of our age, which has to do with relationships and creating the dynamic of a relationship where love becomes what fires the will, that's what both stories are about, and whether you can have faith in, in what you cannot see, and whether you can have the strength to forge the substance of the earth, the carbon of the earth. Ilmarinen is, is forging metals in the Kalevala. He's the great forger, the great smithy. And that's what we're supposed to be doing in our age. We're supposed to be taking metal and forging it to take the lower metals copper, silver, and turn them into gold. It's the same process of, as the alchemist, but the description is for our time. And it describes this ether world, and it describes it in a way that I've never seen in any other story. And Rudolf Steiner again and again focuses on a few things. He says, for the future, study the Kalevala. And for the future, get meteorite and work with it. And this is the amazing thing that has come to my attention through the study of John Barnwell and others, that Shungait, which is probably the reaction of carbon being heated through a metamorphic process that turns it into a, a stone that is only found in Shunga, Russia. And they really don't know what it is, but it's a type of a graphite. It's a type of carbon. And it's a type of carbon that can be transformed into a substance called C60, carbon 60, or carbon 70, or carbon 80, or carbon 80 with hydrogen and oxygen, which we now believe, some of us, that this is the path of the human being for the future. It has to do with the transformation of carbon through the reaction of metals. Now, how does this have anything to do with 5G? Because... We have in our hand a transformation of metals as a cell phone that is then working with, in a certain area, with the etheric, this magical golden fir tree that is in full bloom, that has emerald colored branches and the great bear of the north and the stars in its limbs and the golden light of the moonlight there as a substance, like a, a love calling you. And so Ilmarinen climbs into this tree and it takes him off to the Northland. And there he, try, he tries to, well, he does. He forges the Sampo and he gets his rainbow maiden, the love of his life. He does it all for love. Psyche and Eros, it's all for love. It's all for love, folks. So no matter how you want to break it down, in nature, if you say love, you say carbon. All of course, organic chemistry is based upon carbon, and it's because carbon is always willing to give away parts of itself to create new combinations, to even give itself up and die, but and turn itself into soot, turn itself into, you know, inert carbon, like charcoal. It's like a burning process. So Rudolf Steiner said that carbon is, of course, 
the Philosopher's Stone and that it's everywhere. He also says that carbon and the transformation of it through a process he calls the frontal spinal column in his early days and later calls the earthly and cosmic nutrition stream, he says we transform carbon from carbon to oxygen to nitrogen to hydrogen and through that process of the physical etheric astral ego development, in other words, the forging of the four things that come out of Ilmarinen's forge, he called them the the crossbow, and in each of them they had a mixture of the elements of metals. But in a minute I'm going to tell you why it's so amazing, the, the research that has just come up that now is so helpful to everyone. But anyway, you're the forger. You're the smithy. And what do you do with metals? You allow Apple to make you a cell phone you don't understand a thing about. I'm saying me. I do. I allow. I use one of these phones. I allow a company and a group of people who wrote programs, millions of lines of source code that I could never understand, even though I'm a programmer. I can't even comprehend what my cell phone can does or can do, let alone that it's wireless and I have a broadcasting degree. So I know about broadcasting ways, and yet you still cannot understand these things with the human mind. And where are these things? Where are the activities that happen into your cell phone? Where are the activities in the antennas? Do we see any of it? It's invisible, folks. We're working with invisible forces pulled out of the ethers, that beautiful golden fir tree of Ilmarinen, and we are desecrating it with electromagnetic frequencies that not only harm us while we're alive, but imprison us after death. This is a very serious matter. This is the war in heaven brought into the etheric realm, what Rudolf Steiner calls the second coming of Christ, or the appearance of Christ in the etheric realm. And he says that Christ right now, because of materialistic gray shadow thinking and humans being locked in this realm after death, that Christ is being crucified again. And it's the second most powerful event in all of human history, spiritual history, and physical history. The first most being the mystery of Golgotha, his birth, death, and resurrection. Christ's birth, death, and resurrection through Jesus of Nazareth. That's the first one. But the second one is the re-crucifixion of Christ in the etheric on the realm that we can witness this through our own angel. And that is the mystery. Rudolf Steiner tells us that when we contact our own angel in this age, in a, the negative aspects that happen is the human being is, unfortunately, because of world destiny, every human being who's born on the globe of the earth is pulled across the threshold between the physical and the spiritual. In other words, what we would call the threshold of death, what we would call psyche, going into the underworld, or the Theseus, going into the underworld, or Orpheus, or Hercules, or Aeneas. But it all, was, all came from the original female. She went into the underworld, and what did she go there to get? She went there because she owed Venus a debt because Psyche had hurt Eros, Cupid, Venus's son. I won't get into all of that, but she owed the debt. And so Venus said, go get some of the beauty of Persephone in the underworld and bring it back to me. And so she did, and she followed all the rules, and she went there, and she pay, went past Cerebus, and she paid uh, to get across the river Styx, and when she got there, she didn't eat the food, and she got the beauty of Persephone, the dark beauty of Persephone, put it in a container, and brought it back up. But on the way to Venus, she couldn't help herself. She had to open that box. And when she did, the swoon of the beauty of Persephone came over her face and she fell down as if dead. And then, of course, we know in the story that Eros, and by the way, if you want a, a version of this, my own version of this, is in the book Eternal Curriculum for Wisdom Children, which is one of the books that uh, we've put out. I have I have both a complete re uh, uh, rendition, a new rendition, of the Kalevala and Eros and Psyche. So they're both in that book. So if you want these, you can't get them in other places. 
in, in very good fashion and versions that you'll like. So I wrote this so that people would have it because it's part of the eternal curriculum. And that's again in the eternal curriculum, wisdom, uh, uh, eternal curriculum for wisdom children, which is based upon Waldorf education. And I took on the adult side of what we give children in the Waldorf school, the adult version would be to study these other things Rudolf Steiner told us to study in our age to get through the challenges that we're having. So what is that challenge? How many of you have opened the box of Persephone and your iPhone has taken over your life? How many of you have become addicted because it's one of the number one plagues in America, addiction to digital devices? People are giving up human relationships for digital devices and now robots are actually taking over in the houses of prostitution because people are preferring robots rather than humans for even sex. But remember what Rudolf Steiner said? That the aberrations of what happens in your astral body, that body where your angel works, that lets you look into the etheric realm where Christ is appearing, because we really can't look into that invisible realm except through the help of our angel and our astral body. But when we look in there, we can see the second coming of Christ if we're fortunate, and we can even see that coming towards us under other circumstances. So the point is, the battle is in the etheric, and it is through the angel. And the angel, when that is distorted, when the angel is distorted by Lucifer in your astral body, by Araman in your etheric body, and by the Asuras led by Soroth in your physical body, what happens? Rudolf Steiner tells us in the work, the work of the angel in the human astral body, which is a lecture he gave, one that all of us should read and cherish because it tells us in our time how to react to these things, how to basically engage in the battle and win. He says that the negative aspects of that, and remember those are your three doubles, your double of your astral body, etheric body, physical body in America, we have a fourth one, an electrical, electromagnetic double we have to wrestle with also. But those doubles, those appear as the three-headed cerebus when you cross the threshold. Same thing as when Psyche went into the underworld. And so what is it we're facing? We're facing fear, doubt, and hatred at the threshold. If we could conquer those things, we could cross the threshold spiritually and awake. But we can't, most of us, because we're not angels yet. And so what does that hap what happens to us when we cross the threshold and we're pulled in all directions at once, particularly the three directions of thinking, feeling, and willing, being ripped apart because we do not have a coherent ego, an I, because these devices have eaten our ego every time we give them consciousness. Instead of developing your own consciousness in a human way, we develop it in a machine intelligence way instead of a human intelligence way and we lose our soul's development into the spirit we lose our ego and that's why Rudolf Steiner says Asur Asuric beings can eat your ego so Rudolf Steiner says that the work of the angel in the astral body when it is distorted becomes neurosis in thinking psychosis in feeling and aberrations of sex and violence in the will well, neurosis, psychosis, and sex and violence are basically the very illnesses given to us by these machines that work not in a realm, and I would disagree with people who say that this is uh, like the old hero, even Psyche or Hercules or anyone, Mercury, the god Mercury, descending into hell. Uh, we're, being, we're being pulled there, but the problem is that's not the hell that we go to after life. Unless you have been sucked into that sphere and in a different way. There is a different hell. That's not the hell we go to now. The hell we go to now is called the eighth sphere. And we've written about this, talked about this in other talks. But the eighth sphere is a sphere that's not even in this three-dimensional world. It exists other than that. It exists outside of all seven incarnations of the earth. Saturn, sun, moon, earth. Jupiter, Venus, Vulcan, it is outside of those. And that eighth sphere is the sphere that your iPhone works in. It's the sphere where your ego is being sucked when the electromagnetic frequencies kind of get stuck in your body and start eating you and that you become sensitive to them and you get electro hypersensitivity and other illnesses. Many illnesses that we have highlighted 
The last article we did, 44 separate illnesses created by electromagnetic frequency penetration of your body and microwave penetration of your body. It doesn't matter that you're hold, that they've tested the phone. They tested the phone for a very short while. They haven't done any longitudinal tests on these things because they haven't been out that long. This is all experimentation on the human being, which has gone awry and now is being directed almost by machine intelligence itself to continue to propagate innovation without morality. So, is Araman going to incarnate into the internet? I uh, No, the internet is right now generally through wires. He will not be using those wires, but he will be definitely incarnating and he will be doing it into the highest forms of digital technology through wetware. And these things are also in the plans and they already have, are in fact happening as we speak. You can turn the sense glands of your tongue and your nose into once it goes through the brain, they can be rerouted and sent to your eyes so someone born blind can now see. They can't see tremendously well, but they can see kind of a shadow world and they can make their way through the world by using their nose and their tongue through wetware that is implanted in their body. This is very... It's, it's happening all the time now. I can't even go into how many of those things are happening. That's to scare you. Now, are we being an alarmist? Yes, get your children away from these devices. Don't give your little babies tablets. Don't put your children on the computer. Don't let them get into YouTube watching and all of that. It's an addiction worse than heroin. We cannot even describe how bad it is that it literally eats up the minerals in your brain that are the ones that are the hyperconnectivity that allow you, in fact, through your perception to digest what I was saying earlier as the mineral, minerals and metal, metals and the substances of the earth. You won't be able to digest in your normal spiritual life the substances of the earth if you allow the Asuras to take over your life, your rituals, your sight, your sound, what you do with your hands and your body, the way you even put a curve in your back because you're bent over working on your iPhone. We are talking about a planned total destruction of the human being, I, their human consciousness, their ego consciousness. Who is planning that? Soroth is, through the Asuras and through the work of Lucifer and the work of Araman and the incarnation of Araman, but that's not to worry. We can antidote all of that. So let's go over to from the dark side to the light side because everybody has that opportunity many times a day to go between the dark and the light. The light side is that Ritter Steiner told us if you use peat moss and make it into a fabric, it will stop these EMFs from even entering your body. So people who have electrohyposensitivity can get these peat moss clothing. You can find this online. Some anthroposophists have actually done this in the past as an industry, and they, they were successful, pretty successful at it. But even simpler than that, you can use Edgar Cayce's idea that all viruses are frequencies and all frequencies touching your skin all become electrostatic energy that can be diffused by simply putting steel on the skin of your body. In other words, wearing a steel necklace, you will diffuse these things. They will simply go in, the frequencies will go in, they will become coherent because they'll be sucked into iron because they love iron and they love magnets and they love meteorites and they love a substance that I'm about to tell you about that is mind-boggling, which will go back to my why I told the long story earlier. But anyway, you can also get devices that were created in America and in England. In England, in the Delaware Institute, you can look that up, they created many devices called radionics, where they emit frequencies, and those frequencies, they were able to attune them to illnesses and health and they have a frequency for every illness and a frequency that causes that imbalance, that disharmony to come into harmony. And you can treat people even at a distance by simply using a picture that they put on a metal plate that goes into the circuit. And so there are many of these, hundreds of these devices. Now they get so sophisticated. There are ones called, well, let's just call them biofeedback machines. Just look up biofeedback. I don't want to mention names of ones that we use effectively because then I'm selling a product or saying that, you know, I'm a doctor. I'm not recommending anything. I'm 
notice I say, people say these things are there, blah, blah, because I am using qualifying words and everything I'm saying, because I'm not a doctor, I'm not telling someone with any type of symptom, anything to do. I'm just telling you some of the things people do. Okay. So you can get many devices, hundreds of devices, safe, well, create, I almost said one of them. You can get devices and some of them we have links to our articles where you can go buy these devices where they take electromagnetic frequency into the device and cohere it. They're small. They look like a silver dollar, but they're embedded in plastic so that they can continue to do their work. But there's also ones that are shaped like vessels from ancient cultures. There's also ones you can put in your window that then cause the, all the frequencies that are actually hitting that window and being transmitted into your win, into your environment to cohere. And when I say cohere, I mean bring them into a coherent frequency so that it is not erratic, electrostatic, and causing stress, which we would call, or scientists would call, heat. That's all they say this stuff does, is it heats you up. Wrong. It does much more than that. Now, are there other types of radio frequency transmissions? Yes, you can take these radionics devices, these biofeedback devices, and you can find a person's signature. Your signature is your full name, your date of birth, and where you were born. Just simply that. You don't have to have where you were born. You do not have to have the date of birth. Simply your name alone can find your signature in what is called subspace, or where these very, very subtle frequencies can not only find signatures, but then apply other signatures. And those signatures that it will be applying will cause health because they're taken from good things like echinacea or gold or silver. Sending them homeopathically, radiopathically, through these devices to the signature that it finds. Now this has been proven again and again. So there's many of these things, but today, my good friend John Barnwell called up and said, make sure you tell people to antidote 5G. You simply take C60. And I went, oh, of course. Carbon 60 was discovered by a number of people, but they name it Fullerite after Buckminster Fuller. And I'm going to tell you a bit of his story. He, like Pat Flanagan and many others, decided to find why the Hunza people lived to be 125 years old in the old days before modern technology came into the Hunza Valleys and the Gilgut Valley and the valleys next to them. So they assumed it was water. So Buckminster Fuller went and gathered up water from all the places that people supposedly live long and or that the water from that place healed people. And he found that there was sungite in it, S-U-S-H-U-N-D-I-T-E, sometimes spelled with it, uh, S. C-H-U-N-D-I-T-E, but sun, sun, Sungite, okay? So they found that Sungite was in it. So Sungite appears in many places in the world, but strangely enough, in the places it appears in concentrated forms, people live a long time. So Buckminster Fuller being the genius that he was, and some other geniuses started to notice this from other ways of using lasers and other things to change carbon into a higher form of carbon. So he found this happened naturally. But when he would looked, and when you look closely, you're going to find there's only one place that Shungite comes from, Shunga, Russia. And Shunga, Russia happens to be, oh, by the way, when you're talking about Shungite, you're talking about usually a black substance, but if you get the highest quality of it, it's a rainbow-colored substance. Well, when Ilmarinen went to forge the Sampo, he had to go to one place and one place only. And then he had to search around until he found rainbow colored stone. And upon that stone, he built his smithy. In other words, he transformed Shungite. And when you look where Shungite is, it's in the same exact area that is described in the Kalevala. It's called the Northland or the land of old Lohi. And when you see that this was a place that a meteorite, a Krondite meteorite, which has a lot of carbon in it, which went through fantastic transformations as it traveled through the solar system by solar, all types of radiation, gamma radiation, you know, open cosmic radiation, degenerating and transforming carbon, which was, Krondite has 
a lot of earth, Earthly-like substance in it, and it came from a planet that exploded and became our asteroid belt. Some of you may find that completely shocking. But anyway, that's the truth for those of you who didn't know that, according to Rudolf Steiner. And so when grondite falls to the Earth from the asteroid belt, it has a lot of carbon in it, and it's been transformed. That carbon hits in a few places in the Earth. It just so happens, coincidentally, to where water goes across it, and there was, uh, and there was metamorphic action going on with stone. So this stuff becomes stone, and it becomes uh, brachiated, and it becomes colorful, and it becomes this magic stone that is necessary for Ilmarinen to forge the Sampo, in other words, to find your ego. Well, why would Shungite have anything to do with the human ego? I'll go to, into that in a minute. Shungite conducts electricity. It is mostly carbon. If you change carbon according to Rudolf Steiner in the future, it will become a liquid carbon that is what the human body will be 100% composed of. Carbon now is what gives us all of our substance because we're organic beings. And as we transform it through the, uh, the earthly and cosmic nutrition stream in the frontal spinal column of the human being that Rudolf Steiner speaks about, we change carbon into a higher substance that is calcium carbonate. It becomes a crystal that becomes piezoelectric. It can then conduct electrical energy and emit electrical energy. Same thing happens when carbon becomes C60. It then becomes a, a, a conductor for electricity. And it can actually, in a way, handle electricity better than any substance on the earth because it can transform what we use as our electrical circuits. And so people put it into other circuits and it enhances that circuit. In other words, Sungite transforms electrical energy into cohered, perfect energy, more or less, or the best energy that we know of so far, if it's electromagnetic. So, get Sungite and put it on you. But what did Rudolf Steiner say? Over 10 times he said, get meteorite. He was speaking of the future in most cases. Get meteorite and work with it. So not only peat moss, not only we're suggesting sungite, which is a meteorite, but we're suggesting regular meteorites because regular iron meteorites do the same thing because they usually have palladium in them. So, well, excuse me. If you get a palladium infused meteorite, it will be attracted by a magnet but it will not tarnish. And that means it has white gold in it and other types of purified high metals. The same metals that create conductivity in the human brain, by the way. Superconductivity and hyperconductivity are all because of you know cesium, uh, white gold, palladium, and, and that whole uh, group of metals. So these groups of metals are in fact what is being depleted by the use of, of these devices and that's what I was talking about before. It actually takes metals from the brain. So what is happening? We can change that by simply having meteorite on our person. Rudolf Steiner created a medicament for people who were anemic and who needed more strength. So if you're weakened and fatigued by EMF, well, isn't it funny that Steiner's medicament, a homeopathic medicament of meteorite will give strength in your, your blood and strength in your hemoglobin and give you more energy. Hmm, that's because they're connected. And it is really the Archangel Michael who brings meteorites to the earth, as we know, according to Rudolf Steiner. So this place in Russia where Shungite is only found in Shunga, Russia, there's only a few mines of this, is the, the right next door to it is a place called Archangel. So these, this is a place, and we know Russia for some reason really draws a lot of, well, probably because it's so big, it draws so many meteorites that are of great significance to human study, including, well, all, all kinds of ones I'm not going to mention. But anyway, the point is, get that. You could also get these radionics devices. You can get these spaces that cause, these uh, devices that cause your space to be safe. You can put a Faraday cage around your, your, um, your meter, which is using microwave. And that's simply taking copper. And what is it that Ilmarillion has to find first? 
before he can even look. He has to find the copper, the copper mountain, you see. And then when he finds the rainbow stone, he's got the copper mountain. And what comes from copper? Copper, silver, gold. So what is he talking about? He's talking about the transformation of metals. So what is Rudolf Steiner talking about? He says that we are basically an alchemist transforming metals into gold. And this gold is what is part of the process for the etherization of the blood, but more specifically, as described in volume two of Gospel Sophia, it is where the human being in the heart creates 100 times more energy, bioelectric energy, than even in the brain. People think the brain is the source of energy. That is incorrect. The heart has, some say, a thousand. And in some cases, for instance, when you go into superhuman feats by adrenaline rush, 10,000 times the charge bioelectric charge of the brain. So what we're dealing here with is has physical aspects to it, but we're talking about spiritual stuff. So when Rudolf Steiner said, get meteorites and work with them, he didn't say what to do with them. Now you can buy a hundred different devices using these things, particularly Shungite. You can go and they have entire sites devoted to people who have electro hypersensitivity and devices, literally many, 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 many devices that can cause Shungite to go into the flow of energy in your own body, which then can cause the electromagnetic energy to be cohered. But you can also use bentonite, a clay that sucks up this negativity. You can also use diatomaceous clay or diatomaceous earth. You can use C60 and you can see uh, all kinds of different methods work. So we aren't recommending any one. We're just telling you there's a lot out there. We invented one for ourselves to protect ourselves, which we call the cube. And then we invented an antenna that, ex that receives this energy, but also uses your human energy and perception to close the gap. Rudolf Steiner's gap, he mentions the gap, what, a dozen times in his lectures, and he says, use the gap. And he shows the importance of the gap. Well, we used... Uh, biogeometry and uh, antennas to enhance the gap so that all you have to do is put this on anything you want to cause to cohere and your energy causes it to cohere not just the little sticker and its shape and structure the sigil as it's called but that too and don't forget the power of sigils it's incredible but in biogeometry there's all kinds of things you can do you could to cause energy coming into your house through electromagnetism to be cohered or to cohere energy coming through your windows or any structure in your house, so on and so forth. There's devices you can bury in your ground. There's devices, tubes you can bury that use orgone energy. There's devices use sural energy. So we just want to say there's a lot of these things. So do not be in despair. Here's what's going to happen. And I can only say this to an audience of anthroposophists because no one else will believe this. This for human consciousness, this addiction to the digital world of the eighth sphere will simply end. It will simply from one day to the next end. Now, how do we know this? Well, we know it because it's happened before in history, according to Rudolf Steiner in 3101 BC. He says that in Earthly and Cosmic uh, Man uh, lecture series. Uh, and, it, and he says there that there are huge transformations that happen very quickly in human consciousness. And what we're seeing is a huge transformation because Araman is incarnated. And because Araman is incarnated, we are having as much intense conscious focus at this particular time in history that has ever been focused in history. Just like when Lucifer incarnated in China in the second millennium BC as the balance to Araman incarnating in Arama, Araman incarnating in America now, we have to see that it's the Christ that is the midpoint. And with the lid of the Sampo, it rocks to and fro. It's a, it refers to it as the rocking lid of three colors that is spinning. Well, what is that? That's your ego. And what is it rocking between? It's rocking between Lucifer and Araman. Lucifer calling you into these devices and Araman stealing your willpower because you don't know how they work. Because you're not grateful. I'm not grateful. How can we be grateful? We don't even understand it. So it will end. 
it will simply come to an end. But will Araman's control of those who do not become conscious end? No, that will not end. That will become, according to Rudolf Steiner, an entire separate globe of the next incarnation of Jupiter for those people who do not get out of the lure of Lucifer that goes with Araman and lets the Asuras allow Sorath to steal their ego. But that doesn't happen, have to happen because Christ is there in the etheric right now available for everyone to be the counteraction, the antidote, the counteractivity to Sauroth. He is all ready, one, in the hearts of those who have done what Rudolf Steiner said. Rudolf Steiner said to activate the earthian cosmic nutrition stream, or the frontal spinal column, as he calls it, you have to accept an etheric drop of the blood of Christ into your own heart. And if you do that, the second column arises for you, the second spinal column. But it's it's the spinal column, of, let's just call it what it is. It's a spinal column that's created by the nerve activity of your chakras, by consciousness. Consciousness, all the things I'm describing, the human body will transform. It will transform dramatically in the future, my dear anthroposophists. I'm going to describe that to you now, and most people have not noticed Rudolf Steiner described this, but he said that in the human heart is a cube. And he says that cube transforms into a dodecahedron when you become spiritual. C60, this substance that's found in Shungite, that's found in the water of those people who live a long time, that is found as an antidote to so many things, C60 is found in space. It comes from space. It is an effect of space. It is not earthly. It is sent down as a gift from the Archangel Michael. It is meteorites. It is the meteorites that beat back the dragon of summer in the fall with Michael's sword when the meteorites come in. But what is the dragon? The dragon right now is Araman, and it is the incarnation of Araman. And so what we're seeing is all of these people are rising up to materialism, trying to serve their new king that they know is coming. They now call him the artificial intelligence that will rule the world. And many, many people believe this. He ain't going to rule my world, and he is not going to rule your world if you understand what I'm telling you, because consciousness overrules the physical body. It overrules space and time. In the future, the heart will transform into a cosmic heart. That's why Rudolf Steiner said there are two dodecahedrons. The human dodecahedron, the smaller one, and the cosmic dodecahedron, which is the larger one. That is a C60. It is, it is a 12-sided dodecahedron expanded to add 26-pointed hexagons. Which I can go into a great detail what that means. But what it means is that later our human body will transform. Rudolf Steiner says our legs will turn up, our, one of our hands will become our locomotion, the other hand won't be there, and we will turn into a, a ball, basically, and like a human being sitting in lotus position, he describes. Well, that's a sphere. That's what a Mandelbrot set looks like, if you want to get a visualization. Imagine a three-dimensional Mandelbrot set. But what is that going to be? That is what a C60 looks like. And then there's a C70, and then there's a C80, and there's a C80 that has hydrogen and oxygen in it. That is our future. That is the future of carbon. That is the future of the human body. Do not get locked up in believing that you are the body as a human appears now. That is nonsense. We are transforming. Take your arms, Rudolf Steiner says, and your legs, and see all the motions, including your fingers, that they can do moving all about you. What does it create? A globe. He says, that is what you are. That is what your willpower is. So what I'm telling you is there are a million ways to counteract these things, but consciousness is the number one way. Consciousness. But it doesn't mean, oh, hi, uh, I'm high, I'm developed, I'm conscious, I don't care, I'm going to use my cell phone. No, it means becoming conscious of the effects of the devices that you bring into your environment and either have respect for them and gratitude or they will steal your will, your willpower, your ego. What you do is who you are. So if you use these devices in the Internet of Things, you might want to ask, why would you want things to control your life as a slave? Why wouldn't you want your ego to control your life for freedom? So my dear anthroposophical friends, I hope this is helpful to you, and I hope that 
what I'm saying doesn't only alarm you, which it should, and scare the snot out of you, which it should, like facing the three-headed dog of hell, but understand you have the two coins you need to cross that river, and you know not to eat the food, and you know that when you bring back the cask or the vase of the beauty of Persephone, of the underworld of the eighth sphere, that you do not open it 